So in this extra video, I, I wanted to show you how to actually create a model in SOLIDWORKS uh, and then import it into uh, ANSYS, into, into Workbench to then be able to carry out your, your simulations. So let's first of all create a part in, uh, in SOLIDWORKS. So if you haven't if you're feeling a bit rusty with, with SOLIDWORKS, I really recommend that you invest a bit of time, especially during that block zero, the ideal time. It's very important to, uh, to do that. So let's create a sketch first. Um, so SOLIDWORKS, uh, SOLIDWORKS is, is a pretty powerful tool and you create sketches. So first I'm going to draw a line. Series of lines. Note how it's giving me some already some uh, some instant feedback, and I'm going to try to like that to be parallel. Thank you. Hmm. There you go. See, automatically, I've done a parallel. Yeah. Be a bit careful. Fabulous. So that line. Then I'm going to create dimensions. My angle here. Yeah. 120. Millimeter uh, degrees. Uh, we had that one, which I think was 30. That one, which we had set at 20 and 2.80. 80. Okay, absolutely fabulous. Uh, what else? Oh, something interesting is that actually that is not constrained. Blue lines. Uh, I forgot to dimension. There is a dimension missing here. These lines are not constrained. Um, well, I'm certainly not going to go back to Design Modeler and redimension everything. That was not the end of the exercise. I'm going to, to, to just accept it like that. It is good enough for, for the, the exercise here. But of course, it would be very good practice to have that dimension. Another advantage of it works is that I instantly noticed due to the color codes that something was wrong. Something that I didn't notice in design model. Okay, so that's all right. For an, what's the usual? The usual is to apply a feature to that sketch. That will be a extrude feature. Okay, 15 millimeter line done. Accept it. What else did we have? I think there are some sketches. Some uh, what did we have? Ah, oh, yes, we had a novel here. So I'm going to create a sketch. On that face, control eight to go perpendicular to it, and they call it a slot. And so it works. So I'm going to create my slot. It doesn't really matter where it is. I'm not even going to put a dimensioning it. I accept it. Now I need to create a cut extrude, extrude cut here, and I'm going to say. Be more, to be more sensitive, uh, to be more design intensive through all. So if I change uh, the cut, the uh, thickness, it goes through. Okay, fine. That's that. Now, so what I re what so that there is nothing, nothing that you you haven't seen before here. Uh, I feel it. Let's do a fillet. No more fillet. That one. And that one. Oh, forgotten. What was the fillet radius? Ten millimeters. That's good enough. Right, okay, filleted. Now the thing that I haven't done here and that you might not have come across before is this business of splitting uh, a face to, or to, to give, to give a, a, a mechanical uh, simulator a place to apply a constraint, fixed constraint, for instance, or like we did uh, previously, uh, the force, you know, only a portion of a face. At the moment, I can only select that full face. So how to do that? When well, you create a sketch, as usual, sketch, right? And I'm in sketch mode now, and I'm going to um, add a, a, cut that into a rectangle. So how do I do that? Well, I well, could click on, on rectangle here, or something that is quite useful, and I've just uh, be, I'd been using it automatically before. Is that when you right click and move the mouse, you get that wheel selection, and that gives you some of the more the, the commonest the commonest uh, sketch entities, so rectangle, fix it here, 
the U. Done. So now dimension it. And 30. Okay, fabulous. Done. Now, again, this is just a sketch at this stage. This is just a sketch, and it does not allow me to select that, the portion of the face separately. So to do that, select the, select the sketch. And what you need to do is a tool called a split line. So you obtain the split line. There are different ways. Um, the easiest is to get it from that analysis preparation ribbon. So if you don't have that ribbon in your install, not too difficult, right click on any part, these tabs, and add. add it. So there are a lot of different, different tabs that you might want to, to have or, or not. Okay. You definitely want features and sketch as well. You can't really work. You can remove surface, but analysis preparation is, is useful in order to prepare to do things that are useful for, uh, to, to study, to, to, uh, for simulation later. That, now, why would SOLIDWORKS have tab like that? Well, SOLIDWORKS also does its own simulation. And uh, it, it's actually getting more and more powerful. It's possible to use it and do some absolutely fine job. But um, we, 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 we prefer ANSYS. ANSYS is really dedicated for, uh, for simulation. And at the moment, it's still a bit more powerful. But SOLIDWORKS can do some, some very good things. In fact, I will put um, a link in, a, in the lecture to a very, very nice uh, course for SOLIDWORKS simulation on um, uh, LinkedIn, LinkedIn learning for which a university is paying a subscription. So you can, you, you can look at that. It's actually quite, quite, quite a nice one. Anyway, so, uh, okay, I said nice preparation, say my split line, which then go into the detail of that uh, feature. Okay, so the line, oh, no, I think I selected the line. I didn't want the line. So I need to delete it and I will select instead. Maybe sketch stream. I want a full sketch. Could have clicked on it in, in the graphics area, but I quite like the uh, extended tree here. Okay, and where do we apply it? We apply it on that face. Okay, and then accept. And now I got a split line. I should give it an, I should rename it really to make it much easier. Now that allows us to select separately. Can do it on there as well, just for illustration, create a sketch, control eight to go quickly right to it. Uh, so I'm sketching now. I'm going to draw a circle. The circle is here. Okay, accept it and use that for a split line on the same face. Accept. And now, so it's, it is possible here and later in uh, mechanical to select, to select only a portion of a face to apply a force or something like that. And don't want it anymore, so delete. Yes, delete the sketch as well. Okay, so that is a part in SolidWorks. So, we can save it. Fine, save. So let's call that, let's call that bracket one. Bracket one. And that is part in the solid. It is, it, it, so I save it in SolidWorks native uh, file. Okay, because that's quite nice in itself. If I want to modify it later, I can go back. But the student edition of um, uh, Workbench does not allow to import directly SolidWorks format. Uh, the full academic version that we have on uh, on campus does allow that. But not here. So need to export it in a different format. So we save it as bracket one, but I'm going to change the format. Now different format work. Um, STL works. I know I've tried that. I have, I have not tried all the formats, but one that is quite common in industry is a so-called parasolid. So I'm going to save it as a parasolid, and which has a very strange extension name X underscore T, but that's okay. So I'm going to save it again bracket one XT. Okay. So that's done. And next, what I need to do is create, go back to Workbench, create a new static structure. Ah, could give it a name like import SW. And geometry is not defined. Right click on geometry and then do an import geometry. And what? Ah, 
it automatically sees, sees it. If it doesn't, you can browse. You can browse and go to the correct uh, the folder where I saved it and bracket on XT and import. And it has imported it in the par solid. Notice there are different difference. In uh, on compass, you can import solid rules directly. Fine, so that's all very good. So let's open mechanical by double clicking on model. It takes a bit of time, so I'm gonna pause. Oops, sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, successfully called uh, mechanical. I can recognize the interface. We see our little tree, okay, with the mesh and structure and so on. What we're gonna care about here is our oops, our model. All right, and what I wanted. So that that model has been successfully transferred from SolidWorks through Workbench, and then that it can be read in uh, Mechanical. And indeed, what I cared about was the ability to uh, to to, uh, to apply force or constraint on on different faces. And from from then on, this is exactly the same, just the, 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 the same process as before, creating a mesh. Uh, applying boundary conditions and selecting solutions and then doing the run. Okay. I hope that you find, you, you found this uh, little extent, uh, extension uh, useful. And as usual, any queries, please use the forum. Thank you very much.